Yes, it is still one of the biggest um, stories in town today. The PIB and the many controversies around the PIB. It all started with um, a 10% um, proposal by host communities and then the federal government proposing a 2.5%. Uh, and then later we saw a 5% uh, uh, being approved by the House of Representatives and a 3% by the um, senators. Now the issue is harmonizing. All of those figures have been the bone of contention. We saw what transpired yesterday at the National Assembly. Um, not an exciting position, uh, many would say, but then let's hear the perspective of the Ijo National uh, Council. In Congress. the studio today, we have um, the, the president of, um, of um, the Ijo National Congress worldwide. We have Professor Ben Okaba in the studio. So good to have you join us this beautiful day, Prof. Thank you very much. Yeah. So let's, let's just have your perspective. Exactly how does all what is going down right now about the PIB make you feel as um, a Congress? Okay, uh, well, in the first place, uh, I want to salute the dexterity, uh, the sagacity, and determination of uh, uh, legislators from the Ijo nation and South out extraction uh, for standing on the path of justice for standing with the people mm. against this injustice admitted to the job people. Uh, 27 million job people worldwide are unanimous in supporting their position and also the walkout, which we consider as very historic and symbolic. Uh, yes, the 10% was even considered paltry. Uh, when compared to the level of degradation we have suffered over the years since 1956 when oil was first struck in Oloibri, Ijo Nation. As we speak, all the export terminals from Aquaibom to Delta, the five of them are all located in Ijo territory. These, none of these areas is linked up by road. There is no water. We have suffered neglect. We have suffered various forms of degradation. And uh, we also observe that there is a systematic or frustrated attempt to further deprive the job people in spite of our cries over the years. Yes, uh, by 1957-58, in Lake Congress in London, they just made a case for a separate region because we're not too sure of our safety, of our survival, of our right to collective existence within the Nigerian territory. That was not given us. We've been balkanized criminally into states where we, 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 are, we, we, we suffer perpetual uh, uh, minority status. We don't have water, we don't have amenities, but we bear the burden of the growth and survival of this nation. Yeah. We're the reason for the amalgamation of this country because the resources from us, both human and material resources, even in palm, during the palm oil days, were dominant. We had, we had kings that dominated the legitimate uh, 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 trade. So what we're saying is that we are getting fed up. Today, yesterday, sorry, uh, oil, marginal oil fees that are domiciled in our own territory, where we suffer uh, indescribable losses, where we suffer hazards of various forms, were revoked and distributed to people, to the Kaba, who don't know the difference between palm oil and crude oil. Bayasa State, for instance, has a government that owned just one marginal oil. It was taken away from them. Uh, over the over or the close to 100 uh, 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 marginal oils that were redistributed were done in a manner, even when the lost sons of the nation went to court, they took those oil wells and gave to the cabal. Today is the PIB. Tomorrow it will be the Water Resources Bill. They are pushing us to the wall. Uh, we are so happy. The message you want to send to Nigerians and the world is that the walkout staged by Ijo people 
in the Senate, in the House of Reps, represents the feeling and disposition of the job people. All right. Professor Kaba, let, let's, let's bring it down to what is on the table as it is now. Uh, right now, it would seem as if it's just 3%, 5%. The House of Reps should meet today to decide what they want to say. The, uh, the Senate have come out to say it's 3%. And you have said even the 10% that was you know, in, originally in the pipeline was very small compared yeah. to what the job people, or let's say even the Niger Delta people generally would want. At this point in time, if it is benchmarked at 5%, would it appease you for a while? Uh, well, 5, 3, and 10 are figures. Our ultimate position is 10%. And we still believe that 10% is good enough for us. And that's why I'm asking that let's say it is 5% that the <clears throat> two arms of the National Assembly have come to ratify and say, although the Senate has said it's 3%, but they can't go without the National the House of Rep also being in tandem with what and the decision will be taken at the end of the day. Would you take it? Um, just like I said earlier, right? Our take home is 10%. If it gets the back five to five percent, maybe we will take another look at it. But as we stand, we are insisting on ten percent. You need to know. You need to know what. You need to visit some of these oil-bearing communities. There's no water. The source of livelihood is destroyed. These are places that were involved in commercial fishing, but you don't see all those things. These are places that were involved in some form of farming and. Another phase. The ecosystem is entirely destroyed. Meanwhile, the people don't have <coughs> hospitals. Meanwhile, the people don't have good schools. Meanwhile, the people don't benefit from anything that the state brings. And if you are talking about developing the area, you are giving paltry, paltry, 5%, 3% is inconceivable. We consider it as wickedness. And to be very frank, we are mobilizing. We are mobilizing because it is, it is we are, we, 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 our commitment to the Nigerian state, to a, to a large extent, is getting wind on a daily basis. All right. So, Professor, um, it's not, this is not an attempt to discredit your position. But then, we had a conversation earlier on the show today, where earlier rather on the show, where um, we're looking at um, a provision on the PIB uh, that constitutes. Um, maybe some level of transparency in uh, the usage of the funds allocated to the region. We've had a 13% term derivative over time. The argument is that the leadership of the South-South had not done well with um, funds that have come into the region. What is the guarantee that if per adventure we get a 10% that we would get the desired development within the region? What guarantee do we have at that? Now, you should ask yourself, where does corruption not exist in this country? Where? It is not, it is not um, the reason why we should um, accept it. No, we are not saying we are accepting it, right? But the question is that, tell me the state, at what level you don't have corruption in this country? That is the issue. So that people are corrupt does not mean that you should not give them money, right? We have internal mechanisms as we speak because we are conscious of the fact that yes, if we are, we in the past, we've been more conscious of at least asking certain questions, right? We'll have done better than that. But that mm -hmm. shouldn't be a reason why we should be denied. And again, if you go into the nitty-gritty of these agencies, you will also discover that they serve the interest of, of non ejos and non niger deltans more than the EJO people. Go to NDDC, go out and look out for the big contracts, and you'll see the names that are tied to them. Look at the revelations in, the, in, the, in the NDDC. When Apapi went on and said, look, over 90% of the contracts in NDDC are allocated, assigned to members of the Senate. And they said, look, off the mic, off the mic. That tells you, that speaks volume. In the, the character of the Nigerian states is, is, is such that, that to obtain leadership position, even as low as, as being a member of the House of Reps, you must show loyalty to powers outside the region. And by doing so, 
you know the implications. All right, Professor Okaba, let's, let's, we're not setting aside the PIB, but it's very good for us to get to the root of the issue so that even when the PIB comes your way, if it pans out the way the IJO and the entire Niger Delta people would want, then we'll get the results, the desired results for, the, for, the, for that bird that lays the golden egg, so yes. to speak, for the Nigerian economy. What about the governors around the, in the Niger Delta states and the efforts they're putting into developing the states uh, to which they've promised while they were seeking uh, to, to hold office? Are the job people, the entire Niger Delta people, calling them to account for the resources being deployed in the states? Because if not, when, when you even get the 5% you know, that you're looking for as host communities, how will this be deployed to the benefit of all? Yeah, uh, again, that has been a recurring question. But the issue is that you can see that there, there is some systematic improvement. There are states in the Niger Delta. I don't want to mention names okay. so that uh, uh, I don't look discriminatory. <laughs> uh, there are governors in the states, in the, in the region, that people call Mr. Project. And you go to those places. And you are just mentioning them. Eh? Just mention no, the we all know Mr. Project. Mr. Project, <laughs> Mr. Road. Mr. Road, yes. Eh? We, know, eh? we know where you're going. Eh? To. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Road, Mr. Project, yes. Mr. Infrastructure. Okay. These are some governors in the region as a result of, of consciousness that they have to serve the people, right? Are doing very well. That is the truth. So I'm sure that others, others who are lagging behind for one reason or the other we follow suit because there's a pattern. How, how sure are you? Because no. it's, it's, it's been years and years and <coughs> we look forward to hearing things like this and it still seems to be the same, same no, old story. No, 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 let us not be talking about the past, right? I know the past is important, but the current trend is that every, every leader, every governor, look at our senators rising up to education. This is something we had that in the past, in the, in 19, in the last time we had a situation like, like this was when Pahike Clark walked stage, walked out from the uh, uh, political reform conference in uh, uh, 1985. Okay. Okay. Right? Look at the bravery. Right? Look at the, the look, look at the, the unity. In the same manner, we are going to hold our leaders accountable for whatever money that are being spent. In fact, the INC is so conscious of that because we cannot just be getting money from up there and without uh, uh, asking questions as to why and how these monies have been spent. Yes. But the nitty gritty is that give us us what belongs to us. In fact, we are in a country where for the jaws, what belongs to us, the oil that belongs to us belongs to everybody. What belongs to them belongs to them. To them. Mm. What, is the, what, is, <coughs> what is happening to the gold in Zamfara? In this country, we have a situation where somebody, the man that owns something, the, 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 the tenant dictates what he pays and how he pays it. It's not acceptable, right? Allow us to control and manage our oil. Mm -hmm. Our ultimate goal is self-determination. There's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. Our ultimate goal is resource control. But moving towards this goal, it's a process. We, we just felt that the government should be sensitive, should be gracious and be grateful enough to say that this is from, it is from this soil that the sustenance of this nation relies on. It is from this, in this environment that we get all the resources, we putting bridges, in putting up houses, in putting up all the railway lines and all the resources that are talking about, are from the Niger Delta. Where is the railway line that is running across the Georg territory? I'm talking about export terminals. All the five export terminals, you're talking about Aqua in Aqua Bob State, you talk about Brass, you talk about Boni, right? You talk about Escravos, uh, they are all in Ijo territory. No road between them. They are only good enough for extraction, but they are not good enough for development. Mm. Is that not wickedness? Big questions. Yes. Big questions we didn't because, ask. Because, because, because we don't, in, in, in fact, ordinarily, when you operate a rental system, you, don't, you place a cost on your people. Yes, this nation is growing, but we are not developing because, because we are not giving, paying attention to simple things that from whom we have collected so much. At least give some mm. so that mm. the person will be happy. 
So, so Prof, we, we, we have to let you go now, but um, if, you, if you don't mind, could you just bring us up to speed with a few um, internal mechanisms that we have to monitor um, ex expenses and funds that come into uh, the region, if you don't mind? Yes. Um, for instance, uh, the INC has organs right from, from the national to the community level. And part of the responsibilities of such organs is that in addition to managing themselves, is to act, act as checks on interventions, on interventions from not just government, from uh, uh, donor agencies to ensure that whatever is allocated, whatever is due our people, whatever is it, the old people accountable, pro contractors accountable. Mm -hmm. You can see that in the past, particularly uh, one of the states I don't want to mention, uh, a series of petitions written by the people to say, look, we have received X, Y, Z amount of money over the years. Nothing has happened, right? These are people that have dragged some pieces to ESCC okay. to make sure they are accountable. So that is, that is, that is a level of consciousness that is growing. It's the, 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 the uh, hitherto, uh, well, uh, the money has come, it should go into my pocket. Mm -hmm. You know, I think yeah. that spirit is, is, okay. is, is, is dying down. Well, we'll look at how that one plays out and how you're able to lobby your way through what you want. Maybe we'll have it sometime uh, back on the program. We'll be speaking with Professor Benjamin Okaba, the President of Ijo National Congress Worldwide on News Hub. We wish you the best, Prof. Yeah, thank you very much. Have a great day. Okay. All right. Uh, we are still watching News Hub on Silverbird Television and Silverbird News 24. We'll take a very short break. When we come back, it will be open day proper where you'll be opportunity to call in and bear your mind on the proposed Electoral Amendment Act 2021. After this break. <laughs>